Today we are going to visit Neil Brown. Neil has a collection of Neil Blender stuff and a collection of skateboards, and we're gonna go check that out. Cool. Hey, Neil. Hey. All right, there you go. Neil Brown. <laughs> so basically I was riding my bike down a block in Greenpoint, and I saw Neil on a skateboard on the sidewalk with your kid yeah. pushing the carriage. <laughs> and I looked at the skateboard from the street and I could tell it was like what I thought was a super old skateboard. As I got up closer, I asked you, I said, hey, can I look at your skateboard? And I said, where did you get this thing? Like, why are you riding it? Whatever. And you picked it up and showed it to me and it was actually an alien workshop. Correct. It was an alien workshop, sort of like, I guess, replica of what looked like a GNS high tail or something. Yeah, was a, they did a reissue of an oak wedge tail. And we got to talking, and then you told me your interesting connection to Alien Workshop, and this is what spawned this visit. Tell everybody Sorry, your, um, where you're from. You're uh, well, I've lived in Brooklyn for 20 some odd years, like 21 years, Okay. Uh, here in South Williamsburg. Before that, I was uh, living in Huntsville, Alabama, which is a little town in uh, North Alabama. I pictured you living in Ohio, where the workshop was, and for some reason I thought you were one of like the early employees of Alien no, Workshop. No, I just, um, it's a, a short, long story yeah. of how I met those guys. Around 1990, Transworld ran an article about Paul Schmidt making okay. boards. Right. And I read it and I was like, I can do that. I'm gonna make, start making boards. And um, I built a press, I built molds, a mold, and know where to get veneers from. They're very specific. I actually pressed a couple boards with cabinet veneers and they didn't work out. Okay. And I started calling companies to try to talk to people. Nobody would speak to me. Okay. It's just, everyone would just shut me down, literally hang up, except Chris Carter. Interesting. Chris Carter answered the phone and he told me where I could get some veneers close by in Arkansas. Okay. And it was a guy named Paige Hearn, who still runs a company called Page Skate. Okay. And he presses boards uh, in a factory in Arkansas. And I called him up and he was like, sure. So I actually, the, I got my first load of veneer. I drove to Arkansas and loaded my car with as much veneer as I could. And at the time, Chris Carter had just started the Alien Workshop in Dayton. Right. And they were trying to resource how and where their board manufacturing was gonna happen. That's how I first met Chris Carter, was that cold call. And right. I would call him and I'd send, I'd send him a board that I pressed and things like that. And then um, eventually I started just taking trips through Dayton because my brother at the time was living in Chicago. Okay. And I was driving up the interstate right by Dayton. Okay. Uh, a couple times a year to visit my brother. So I would stop by the workshop and chat with those guys. They would let me have seconds, yeah. would dig through their seconds boxes. And then it was through, through Carter that I met Mike Hill through those visits. But Neil Blender was still a ghost. I, yeah. I, I didn't really have any encounters with him was he, until much later. Was he living in Dayton at that point? Yes. Did he Did he move out to Dayton to start the workshop from Ohio? Yeah, yeah. he okay, moved right. out with Carter and Hill and I would assume it was 1990. Okay. The connection with Neil came years later. At the time, in 93, Neil Blender's brother lived in uh, Madison, Alabama, which is a city right next to Huntsville. Okay, this is totally random because now you got the Carter connection that you were talking about earlier, and now all of a sudden, Blender's brother it's turns all, up. Yeah, completely right. random. Because there's a lot of coincidences. I, I was friends at the time also, like had a connection through uh, Megan Baltimore. Megan got in touch, said I want to get Brian and Sharon with a present, and I made that happen. So it was funny, because I actually delivered it to their house. I didn't see them. I yeah. dropped it in their mailbox and left. But I was like, oh, this is crazy. Brian Blender, Neil Blender's brother lives right here. Yeah. A year or so later, just in the skate scene in my town, everyone's like, Neil Blender lives here. Then flash forward, my friends and I are just walking in the mall, the actual mall. Yeah. And we're walking in, one of my friends just says, oh look, that's Neil Blender. <laughs> so we turn back and we walk back 
and we stopped and we're like, hey, you're Neil Blender. And he was so bummed. <laughs> like, just shut down, looked at the floor, was like, oh, but his brother is super gregarious, super engaging, and mm -hmm. was like, you know, hey, you know, yeah. hey guys, yeah, you know, and he, he was trying to chill out the whole thing, yeah, yeah, bring yeah. it down a notch. Yeah. And then I said, oh, you must be Brian and Sherilyn. And he was like, how the hell do yeah. you know who yeah, I am? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we just started talking about the connections. Yeah. This. That, yeah, that. This is similar to the board that I saw you riding. Yeah, it's an old clay wheel, loose bearing oak plank board. I, you know, that was kind of an early uh, collector's item for me before I was picking up, uh, you know, real decks and vintage yeah. decks. I just was like, so that seems like it's like, like an original, uh, you know, skateboard. And I bought it and I had it for a while. And then when I got those sculptures from Neil, I just thought it would make a good yeah. shelf. Yeah, display. yeah. So these things were in yeah. memory screen. Um, they're paper mache oatmeal containers. What's great about them is, you know, each side. Wow. That is insane. And if you look at them, they're very similar to the masks in Band This. There's a few Neil's masks in Band This. Okay, so tell me how you get these. So how I get these is, Neil and I, you know, we became friends and hung out and uh, he eventually moved back to Dayton. I started going up to Dayton and, you know, crashing with Neil. I mean, it was only maybe one or two or three times, but Neil started gearing up for leaving. He was like, I'm moving back to the West Coast. And then one day my phone rang and Neil was like, I'm moving. I got a bunch of stuff I'm gonna throw away, you want it? Mm. And I was like, of course. Yeah. Like, he's like, I got some decks, I got some art. I'm not taking it all. I was just lucky, I mean, at the time that he called me like yeah. hours away in Alabama yeah. and said I could have it. So yeah. I drove up there that weekend and hung out and he, uh, he gave me a duffel bag full of skate stuff and those. And then he gave, I have this one thing I can grab real quick. This is like probably the smallest piece of Neil Blender Whoa. art there is. It's like a shell or something. Yeah, it's a pistachio wow. kind of mask he made. Damn, that is <laughs> insane. Neil loaded me down with all this stuff, but at the time it was kind of before this skate nostalgia collecting yeah, yeah, yeah. started happening. Yeah. And so I, um, I kind of gave, I'd say, 75% away to my friends in Alabama. Like wow. my core friends that kind of interacted with Neil, knew Neil. Yeah. You know, I kind of divvied it up. I wasn't like, yeah. like, I took a few things that I really liked. Yeah. And um, the mass, I mean the um, sculptures. Yeah. Um, that Mark Gonzalez up there is a deck that Mark gave Neil. Tell me about this one with your name on it. Um, so at a certain point, Mike Hill decided to start doing uh, guest artist decks, and the series was called KTC. Uh huh. And uh, he called me up and said, do you want to do a board? Um, and that's it. Okay, so next to that is uh, the driving, Neil Blender driving. Yeah. Which that is an action, that's a Neil Blender drawing of Eric Nash driving the car. Workshop wise, like the, the olives, is something I acquired from eBay, but I have the original screens for that okay. over here. Films. Same with the Blender speakers. That was a gift from Mike Hill. God, look at that shape. And I have the original with halftone that they used to burn the screens that was burned from the photograph that Neil took of his gotcha. actual speakers. Those are Neil's speakers. Hill gave me the visitor. Hill gave me that slick. Uh, which that is Neil art, if I'm not mistaken, and that, yeah. that's very similar to the drawing that's on the cover of the Dinosaur Jr. record. This was in the duffel bag. This was in the bag from uh, Neil. Wow. This, I think, deck was called the Tracker 757. Oh, okay, I thought, and, I thought maybe this was a, because he rode for Tracker trucks. And they, God um, damn, look at this thing. And uh, I think they just reissued it with uh, Neil. This is interesting, the double rails. Uh, Pizza Hut sticker, wow. I remember when I, we were talking about trying to date this. This, It was yeah. this 
SU2000 yeah. shell sticker. That was like a, a gaff that they had come out with at the time. The Coatman. Wow, that's Neil's writing. So here's the, the big um, surprise. Uh, this is for you. Get the f No, 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 yeah, it's yeah. not. It's not for me. It is. No, it's not. It is. No, the, it's this, not. It can, uh, I think I'm going to faint. It, it can, um, it oh, my can God. Move on to a new home. I, w I would probably mug and kill somebody on the street for this. This is so sick. Fruit of the Lamb. Damn, that's dope. So yeah, this. Start with the front or the back. This was just also in the duffel bag for Neil. Oh my God. The original um, GNS. Okay, let's quickly talk about this. What do you know about GNS in terms of their Christian thing? It's like a husband and wife. I don't even remember their names, right? They're Christians, and they, you know, at the time they still, you know, put the put that forward in stuff like these competition jerseys. Yeah, I I had heard a, a rumor that part of uh, Chris Carter and Hill breaking away was that they wanted to distance themselves from the GNS. They, in fact, I had heard that they always said that GNS stood for God Squad, which is you know them go, them guys taking the piss. But uh, obviously, it's Gordon and Smith, the surfboard manufacturers. This is Neil's team competition jersey that he wore, and I would date this back to probably. 1980, if that, 81. But on this is the first Neil Blender skateboard graphic, his first model, I believe. Correct. So this was in the duffel bag. Yeah, that's one of the, the things I call my, the keepers that I decided to God I damn, to. dude. This is insane. Yeah. But so the Belton story on that good. is um, in Huntsville, Alabama, there was a restaurant a Mexican restaurant named Bandito Burrito. And that's where all the skaters worked and hung out. Okay. I got to drop his name. It was owned by a guy named Oscar Gutierrez, who was from Southern California. And Oscar and Brian Blender became tight buddies. Okay. So Brian and Neil would go to this place. And uh, Neil had given that shirt to uh, uh, a woman who worked there named Monique that I was friends with. Okay. And then she was just like, hey, do you want this? Damn, she gave away. <laughs> and I was like, sure. That's insane. So I've had that since then. So this is from the Notebook series, and Neil drew a bunch of those for all the team riders. Bo Turner, Florida legend, right there. And then this is another Bo Turner, and if you see the, the cut Ta tag, yeah, yeah. this was from when I was pulling seconds. Okay, so that's uh, a Belton tag as well. Yeah. Super go. interesting. When I was pulling seconds. Wow, look at the, that. The scrap pile. God. Um, that I is that amazing. The box because the screen was slightly crooked. Wow. This, uh... Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. God damn, this is, this is insane. Neil. These are all Neil's t-shirts, yeah. possibly. I would literally, I would take somebody's neck and I would squeeze the life out of them and take this shirt off of them and walk away. Well, you don't have to, because that's another thing that's going home with you, Bob. Why? What are you doing? <laughs> don't freak me out. It is. Don't freak me out. This graphic, when I was a kid, I would walk into the skate shop, and I would literally look at it, and I would be like, what is that? What is that? It was the coolest thing I had ever seen. Well, so then it should be with you, because you have uh, this is, I'm going to wear this. Oh, my. Ugh. All right, this is insane. Okay, so this is the, called the snake and, snake and lattice graphic. That's probably like fifth graphic, maybe, out of fourth graphic, third? Surely, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, the story that Neil said, um, I think it was in the Thrasher interview about graphics, was he handed that off, and a woman who did graphics at GNS did the, did the snake. Interesting. And so that's why, if you look at it, you're kind of like, eh, it's kind of... Yeah, it's kind of... It doesn't look like yeah. something Neil would do. Yeah, yeah. He, didn't draw the snake. It's iconic and it's, man, it's so sick. Beautiful. According to Brian, any shirt that is cut, yeah. so the bottom of that Oh, I see. The bottom of yeah, Neil cut. was kind of like notorious for that, cutting his shirts. That meant that Neil skated it. Yeah. All right, so this one, I, I'm pretty sure I have that photograph. I posted it on yeah. my Instagram account of Neil playing his guitar in this shirt, which is fucking crazy. God damn, look at that, you cut the neck. 
Got the Krishna soy treatment on this one. Amazing. This is the original when you know pre-digital layout. Wow. For this box. Wow. Fuck, that's so sick. So wow. If you can see. Yeah. Wow. This, that is amazing. Know, that would be the spine. Mm -hmm. Um, this would be the front, you know, and you can read it face photo number two, right. um, you know, and they would, they would send like, this is just a sticker. And then the, the printing company would have to photograph that to mm -hmm. create wow. this whole packaging. God damn. You know, I feel like I've never even seen the cover of memory screen. Yeah. And then this would be the reverse. Wow. Same kind of thing. They would have the, the layout. Unbelievable. And, um, you know, they'd send, they'd send this sheet and that's like how you're going to lay out your box and then uh mike had this and he's just like hey you want this god damn sure <laughs> this is like crazy uh sort of workshop history yeah. you know stuff right here i love this i don't know if you can get that memory screen was intended to be viewed in total darkness wow uh, preferably with a vcr connected wow. to your stereo that's great and so that is the wow. text that they had printed on the reverse. Interesting. Things I wanted to keep. There is a funny story. Oh wow! Me Look writing an article about. Uh, oh, there you go. About the South for uh, uh, the first issue of uh, Big Brother. Big Brother. So Steve yeah. Rocco calls me one day, and he's like, "I'm going to start my own magazine. Do you want to come out here and work for me?" And I couldn't tell if he was being serious yeah. or jerking me around. And in the end, he was being serious. Yeah. Um, at the time, I was just kind of like blown away, wasn't yeah. sure. And so at the end of the conversation, he said, look, if you're not going to come out here and work for me, write, just write me an article about skateboarding in the South. And that's what ended up in that, um, in that issue. So what happened? You're like, I don't know if he's serious. I'm not going to go out there. Yeah, and with Steve, it was just like, because you could have the second you were like hesitant or whatever, he's just like, uh, yeah, I'm yeah, moving on from you, dude. Right, right, like, right. You, you're not, you're not firing quick enough yeah. for me, and I don't have time for yeah. you. Yeah. So anyway, I wrote this piece, um, about the South, and when I sent it to him, I sent him a bunch of black memorabilia postcards that I had purchased. You could still go to any gas station, and get this kind of stuff. And that eventually ended up being like like what like segregationist style. Yeah, uh, it ended up being the napping Negro. Are graphics. you serious? So wow, I read an article years later about this graphic. Dude, that's and, wild. Uh, so I had sent Steve a bunch of postcards. Wow. Uh, you know, with that kind of stuff on it. Because that in is Alabama, insane. That stuff used to come out. God damn, that is all the wild. Time. And Steve kept that stuff. Like, he didn't use it in the actual article that I sent. Yeah. But he was like, this would make a great graphic. So he met Giovanni and his mom. Steve met with them about this graphic. That's a wild backstory. What stickers do you have? This is great. Where there's some contemporary stuff in here. Here's a, this is a, I don't, I wouldn't say rare, but it's fairly. You don't really see this one too often. My friend has this board. Here it is. Uh, this is to oh. me like something that's pretty funny. Anyway. I have. Oh, it's Rick just Howard. backing somewhere. It's in here. Dude, Corey O'Brien. Wow, it's so sick. Here's a Neil Blunt. This is, oh, damn, look at that. Scorpion. And a Neil drawing of Joe Lopes graphic, the barbecue. What do they call this shit? Like hologram or? Yeah, something like that. Damn, this one's dope. Rob Doskod three. Um, here's the driving sticker. I'd say these are like two of the most iconic skateboard graphics in all of human history. 
Okay, do you want to read this? Because this, I can't read it. Uh, it says, uh, thank you so much for the candy. That box was bionic. I'll send you lots of stuff just until I get caught and Steve has me arrested. Anyways, thanks again. You're a sweet boy. Just to let you rest easier, I made Steve sign this statement. Sign a statement. I won't publish Neil Brown's address and phone number. Steve Rocco. Oh my God, that's care, so man. good. <laughs> that is so good. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it worked. He scared the crap out of me. Yeah. Self-promotional, but that's me riding one of my homemade decks. Oh, wow. Like a capture. Damn, deck. where is that ditch? This is great. This could looks like it could be like a workshop advertisement for the time. Yeah. That's amazing. That's just like in your living room or some shit? Bedroom. Dude, that's I crazy. Load it up before I went to bed. <laughs> it's so crazy that you could take wood and shape it like that. Just car presses and it'll turn out as a skateboard. That was my uh, art checkout thing in there. Oh, sick. Oh, there you go. Neil Brown, brain, brain floss. And there's the, there's the workshop graphic. Oh, and there's the photograph. I appreciate yeah, you showing me all this really, stuff. I, I've had a fortunate uh, experiences that were all just strange yeah, that's, uh, coincidences. Yeah, right? the mall story, seeing Neil in a mall is by far the most bizarre thing. Yeah, in know. Alabama. Thing. Here we go. Billy Ruff. Dude. You can take it or give it to Mark Gonzalez. Oh my God. Yeah, Mark's not getting this, but. Um, I mean, I'll. Going with you. Dude, what the fuck? Why? Uh, because it's like not stuff I want and you'll appreciate it. Oh my get it, God. Get it to the hands of somebody who will like it. I mean, this is going uh, on my, this, this is, is going on my body. And then two rider shirts. Dude. 100% supposedly rider shirts because they uh, are cut off. Good fucking God. All right, Neil. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks so much. Cool. Yeah.